Thanks for introducing me. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sagar. I'm a data scientist at Obika. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the Geo AI, the future of future extraction and classification. So it's like combination of two different technology, geospatial and artificial intelligence. Uh, so Obika, so it's like progress and lo uh, progressive location data solution provider. We are a GIS consultant and a solution provider. We are based in Christchurch, New Zealand. So that's our team. We have 18 months old company, 21 people. Apart from that, uh, Kurt is our CEO who started company in February 2017. And we are uh, 21 now. Uh, Earth observation data and big data. So nowadays, we have a massive amount of data. Uh, data in form of aerial images, satellite images, drone images. How can we extract the information out of this data? These data are sitting in just hard drive or in a computer. No one actually using this data. Uh, how can we use uh, cutting a technolo technology to extract the data and get some insight out of it? So transforming data into insight and in a near real time creates a value. Uh, how can we create a value that can be helpful for construction progress, disaster management, urban development, environment change, market identification. The next thing is uh, just general overview about AI, machine learning, and deep learning. So AI, it's like a field where uh, a programmer that can sense, reason, act, and adapt. So AI has a two different kind of field, machine learning and deep learning. So machine learning is an algorithm who performs improve as they are exposed to more data over time. It's like a statistical programming language that can learn uh, from the data and predict uh, in a near real time. So deep learning is a subfield of machine learning, which contains uh, multi-layer neurons, which learn from large amount of data uh, and then act by itself. So the, in deep learning, uh, we don't have to care about the features. Uh, the algorithm will identify all the set of different patterns and unique uh, features by itself. In machine learning, humans are <coughs> responsible to define all these kind of patterns. So that's the main difference between machine learning and deep learning. So Geo AI, it's a combination of geospatial and artificial intelligence technology where base is the images. So images, it could be anything. It could be drone images, aerial images, satellite images, anything. So it's like how we can combine these two different technology and get value out of it. Uh, yep. So Obika engine. So how uh, we are approaching a Geo AI. So we have uh, images. We develop Obika AI engine that can extract all the different features and classify the features into a different categories like river, uh, buildings, road, trees, etc. Then we pass these features to GIS engine. So the GIS engine will clean the data, convert raster into vector form, uh, assign some coordinates, and create a web map if required. And then uh, we, we extract this data. We identify the false positive and false negative at the end of this uh, pipeline. Then we re uh, overcome this false positive and false negative and try to retrain and pass this uh, data to AI engine for keep learning. So it's like keep going process. Each and every time, if we get 80% accuracy, by removing false positive and false negative uh, and feed that data to, again, for learning, we'll get 85% accuracy. So it's like a uh, feedback loop, and it's keep going process. Uh, so this is a Christ search where I'm living. Uh, uh, I use uh, aerial images. Uh, which has only three band and 7.5 centimeter ground resolution. Each tile has a 15 million individual pixels. Uh, that data provided by the lens. So how can we extract the building outlines from these images? And uh, how can we extract uh, all the different building outlines and use this data uh, to identify the urban development or give this building outline to uh, councils for, for, for that use? So Obika, like we develop a solution that can automatically extract the building outlines. Uh, so we develop a convolutional encoder decoder. So it's like a neural network which has a multi-layer architecture, uh, which can extract all the unique RGBs that are associated on top of the building and identify if this RGB is part of building or not. 
So it's like a binary classification problem. And that CNN, it's like fully convolutional neural network. And uh, it, it can be applied to any kind of images. So that's the uh, job of the data scientists who identify the data pre-processing technique, model training, and evolution. So first, we have our images. We divide the images into two different parts, training and testing. Uh, of course, so like 90% training, 10% testing. So in training, we apply some different cross-validation techniques to identify like how model is performing on unknown data that system never seen before, how the system classify those RGBs with the different patterns of building, like on top of the car park, swimming pool, garden, air condition, chimney, solar panels. So there are lots of different objects are on top of the building. So how the algorithm are working on this kind of area? So we divide into training and testing. Uh, we cross-validate the data, identify how it's like good on testing data, calculate the precision, recall, F1 score, confusion metrics, identify the false positive, false neg negative of this area, and then evaluate uh, like what's the actual building and what's the predicted building, and then calculate the intersection over union. It's like a J-card index. It will give me the indication of how these two polygons are related to each other. Uh, so uh, it's like a keep going process and just tuning the hyperparameter, identifying the right model, right architecture, and just test and inference on the new data that algorithm never seen before. Uh, then after we apply a geoprocessing technique to clean that building pixel. So that's the output of the AI where the, all the AGs are like zigzag. So how can we use that different polygonization algorithm or geoprocessing techniques that clean the raster data and classify each and every rasters into part of building or not part of a building? Uh, so these are the more outputs that extracted from the building outline algorithms. So these are the different use cases, urban planning, consents, uh, direction of unconsensed buildings, addressing, understanding in previous layers, up-to-date mapping, commercial use, determining the solar panel, like if the solar panel is present or not on top of the building. Uh, so that's the prediction. So we train a model on a crisis data. We predict on a different area. So like that, that's the goal of the AI. If you train on a different, uh, if you train on the same area and predict on a different area, that gives an indication of how accurate your model is, how accurate your algorithm is. So we choose 600 different trials from Waimakiri, uh, New Zealand area, and apply that train model. And uh, it's it's taking like 30 minutes run out run uh, run time on a DGX uh, 1080 Ti, so it's like a GPU. So we are using the GPU for all this kind of processing. Next is yep. So the comparison with the old method and a new method. So old method it's like time consuming, uh, human intensive. Uh, human have to sit and draw a polygon on the top of the building. And uh, it's like sometimes inaccurate or cost prohibitive or human resource heavily. But the new method, it's like quick response, near real time results, automated, scalable, cost effective. So it's like within a minute or two minutes, we have uh, that predicted outline for a single tile. Uh, that's the web map that we created. So it's a total inference like we predicted on a different area. And that's the web map that we created. Uh, if we slide over there, you just probably see the building outlines. Uh, what else? So if we detect all the buildings, can we detect the water from the aerial images? So again, it's like using a right algorithm, right approach, right tuning parameters, uh, if it is possible to detect the water from uh, aerial images. So we just develop a different neural network architecture for a water detection because water it's, it's like a 30 centimeter resolution, and it's like uh, all the different convolutional operations are hard to figure it out, the shape, type, area, grain, and texture analysis for a water. Because like if it is a building, then it's easily identify the area. But the water has a big polygon, and it's a big feature. So it's always uh, hard to figure it out what it is. Uh, yep. So like after detecting the water from aerial images, can we classify a water? So we develop another neural network architecture that, uh, that can take input as a detected polygon 
extract these six different features area perimeter elevation area to length ratio average width uh, and then classify if this polygon is river, lake, pond, canal, lagoon or is a wire. Because river are flowing from high elevation to low elevation. So DEM, it's like uh, we have the min-max elevation information. So that it's like unique uh, feature to classify that individual polygon. So we use LINS 1 to 50k topo map data with 90 meter SRTM DEM and extract these six different features that detected uh, from uh, the previous algorithm, water detection, and then pass here, and then classify each and every features into five, different, uh, five or six different categories. Now, uh, it's like uh, we, we train on a New Zealand data and test on a different area, and we have our testing accuracy is 95%. So out of 6,000 polygons, 5,000 polygons are accurately classified. Uh, here are some false positive examples. So we predicted top three confidence score for each and every feature. So here the actual feature is a lagoon and the system predicted is a lake. But the second probability for this feature is a lagoon. So if, if you use like GIS knowledge or some GIS techniques like if lagoon is always near to coastline or if we add more attributes, that can make sense to classify and remove that false positive and false negative information from the data, then uh, algorithm will learn from this kind of information. What else? Can we detect the roads? Uh, so again, we, we use that images and identify all the road uh, polygons and just pass to convolutional neural network and extract all the different kind of road area. Uh, the next thing that we develop, like how can we automatically ma manage the progress of a construction site? It, uh, this is a Yamama site uh, in Saudi Arabia. It's like a huge cement site uh, and the people are uh, manually monitoring the construction, uh, the progress of the different construction building. And how can we automatically monitor that uh, progress? plant sites, we do have the challenge to report our progress at site on a very regular basis. And this reporting is time consumable, walking around the site, looking at the buildings, checking for the progress. Orica came up with the most convincing solution that they presented at Beyond Convention. The event for us was really amazing. So um, I see you came all, all the way over from New Zealand and we got to really make connections with large organizations such as ThyssenKrupp. And what we're doing is we're taking all of the drone images from construction sites and we're combining them with 3D modeling techniques plus artificial intelligence to extract all of the details of those buildings. And we're using that to help measure the progress that is made on those construction sites automatically. We started with a proof of concept. This was finished very successfully. So we have uh, already a first running technical system available. This is all made possible from Beyond Conventions. Beyond Conventions allowed us as a small startup to start collaborating and working together with a large organization. So uh, we take 300 drone images from the entire site. We created a 3D point cloud model. Then we extract the RGBs and pass to a neural network to classify that RGB. Like this RGB is belong to steel pipe, structural pipe, or other area. And then the system classified this area. Then we have actual 3D plant model. And we compare the actual result versus 3D plant model and identify the progress of a particular building. How far, how wide it is. Yeah. Uh, so we are a data agnostic, we provide as a service, we extract the value from the data investment and uh, the data is everywhere. And I'm just going to introduce about the different technology that I'm using. I'm using the two different GPUs, uh, which has a 5000 CUDA cores, one, uh, 16 GB RAM each. And apart from that, I'm using GTX 1080 Ti which has a 3000 CUDA cores, and I'm using uh, TensorFlow uh, as a deep learning library. On top of that, Kera is a neural network API library, which communicate with the TensorFlow. So all the deep learning stuff, I'm using TensorFlow and Keras. Apart from this, I am using OpenCV as an image processing library, Sapley and uh, SKLearn as an image processing library. So, yep, that's it. Thank you.
you explored, uh, I saw you did some TV channel, but you explored five, adding in um, IR and elevation? Uh, no, I haven't. I'm just working with the RGB images, so I haven't explored that part. Um, you mentioned a, an 85% accuracy. If you have um, 100,000 building footprints, so that's about 15,000 that you're expecting to be kind of a um, question. Do you have like a, a way of um, like a confidence interval where you, you can send some humans to uh, check them out and, uh, and you know, kind of increase that level of accuracy? Uh, so it's like it's depend like what what is your area of interest like if it is a like urban area or rural area if it is a downtown there most of big buildings are there and uh, if it is required a human interaction to identify if this polygon is accurate or not so it could be a semi supervised kind of thing human plus machine. Um, how, how hard would it be to, for somebody else to set something like this up using open source tools and PC? Um, it's like it's freely available. So uh, you mean like how hard to develop that using open source technology? Yeah, about to be able to create a, um, a system and work on you know a research question yourself. So it's like you can create a data pipeline easily, but the, the thing is that you have to tweak and tune your hyperparameters in a convolutional neural networks. You have to identify like what, what is the exact size, how many layers you have to use, how many neurons is the input. So you have to tweak and identify your model is not overfitted or not underfitted. It's not biased towards your training data. It works uh, perfectly fine towards unknown data. So you can create a data pipeline and then after you have to tweak your model using that open source technology.